on the Aquila 44 today, and there's a lot of ground to cover with this boat. But first off, the most important thing, look, anybody who has ever scrambled back and forth on side decks can tell you, getting down to the bow is a piece of cake. Now, while we're up here, you might notice this is a little bit unusual here. The deck is not flush. That's because the main cabin of the Aquila 44 is right underneath me. Come on down below and check it out real quick. Thanks to utilizing the full beam, you get not only the big berth, but also a nice little reading nook and a full stand-up head with a shower. You can totally see kicking back and spending a week relaxing on this boat. There's just one problem. I think if my whole family was on here all together crammed in for a week, we'd be killing each other. Lenny, that's, you know, that, I mean, this boat, we've got tons of privacy away. You, you're not going to have that problem at all. Massive cabin here, 21 and a half foot beam right here. We've got two other cabins, completely separate, and they have their own heads with their own um, shower stalls at that. Very private. Believe me, you're not going to have your kids in your way. In the galley, you've got not one, not two, but three sinks, a two burner stove top, a microwave oven, and a refrigerator freezer. You can see a really neat construction feature right here next to the dinette. If we remove this hatch, down here you can see all the wiring. Now notice it's nice, it's neat. It hinges up here so you can access all the different wires, but what's really important is these are all running fore and aft on top of the tunnel. Now that's very important because if any water ever gets into one hull or the other, the wires won't get hit with salt water. Plus, the batteries are up here. So again, if water goes into a hull, the batteries stay up high. All your electronics keep working for as long as possible. Now here's a construction detail you do not see often. An escape hatch with a hammer to break the glass. Of course, there are some things about a boat's construction you simply can't see with the naked eye. Fortunately, today, we have Lex Ross here with us, and Lex knows a lot about how these boats are built. Lex, can you give me some examples of what really sets the construction of this boat apart from others? Yeah, the, the, the boat is entirely resin infused using vinyl ester resin. Now, Lex, I thought resin infusion had become pretty commonplace in this day and age. Yeah, it is um, on the sort of more upper end boats, I would say, yeah, it is, that's for sure. Um, but I think the difference here as well is that we resin fuse every part with its hatch covers. But the main thing is also the, the, the full cross-sectional bulkheads are absolutely resin infused, and that's wonderful. Another thing, Lenny, is that in the uh, resin infusion, we use balsa core. We perforate the balsa core, which through the resin infusion process ties the two skins together. So what this does is actually creates an I-beam. It also seals the water from, if it does penetrate, will not travel across the laminate. So therefore, delamination is really a thing of the past. What does that kind of construction get you? Well, when you're cruising through the islands at a mellow seven knots, you'll be getting 2.9 nautical miles to the gallon. That's pretty darn good. As comfortable as the cabin may be, you get a boat to spend time outside. Let's breathe some salt air. Ah, I can smell it out here on the cockpit lounge. And here on the flybridge lounge. Ah, and here on this nifty bow rail seat. Sometimes just being outside the cabin isn't good enough. You want to be outside of the entire boat. I love this big swim platform. Oh, that feels good. I wish I had my bathing suit. Now, you might be wondering why there are a couple of bar stools back here in the cockpit. Well. The galley opens up, and now you got a bar. Now, two narrow hulls do tend to go through a chop better than one wide hull. And although we should note it was calm on test day, we didn't feel any thumping or bumping, including when we ran through boat wakes. Handling isn't exactly sporty. It takes a lot of wheel to turn this boat. However, close quarters maneuvering is excellent. The diesels are widely spaced, of course, since there's one in each hull, and it really gives the boat a lot of torque when you oppose the engines. And even if you crank it up to 17 knots, top end for this boat, you'll still be getting 0.8 miles to the gallon. Well, our day on the Aquila 44 has come to an end. I can tell you one thing. Spend a day aboard this boat yourself, 
you're not going to want to get off it either. <laughs>